Hi everybody and welcome to my session today. My name is Sarah Lean and I'm from Scotland. I've been in the IT industry for about 18 years now and over the last five or six years I've been focusing on cloud deployments and looking at things like infrastructure as code, DevOps and that's really forced me to learn more Git and in today's session I want to talk to you more about how you can use the extension Git Lens to actually help you with your Git processes and make everything much more efficient. So let's dive in. Now first of all, what is Git? So Git is a powerful distribution version control system that helps teams track and manage changes to their code base efficiently. It also enables multiple developers to work on a project simultaneously, allowing them to merge their changes seamlessly while preserving a history of all modifications. Git operates by creating snapshots of your project's entire directory tree, enabling you to revert to previous states or explore different branches of development with ease. Git facilitates the creation of branches for parallel development efforts and then allows developers to merge their work back into the main code base when it's ready. Git is an open source tool and has become the industry standard for version control, used by developers and engineers worldwide for both small-scale projects and large-scale software development. As useful as Git is, it can be quite a tricky tool. And getting your head around the processes of some of the Git functionality can be hard as well. And this is where tools such as GitLens can really help you, whether you're a beginner to Git or an advanced user. GitLens is a Visual Studio Code extension that provides enhanced Git integration directly within your code editor. It offers detailed code annotations, including information about who made each code change, when it was made, and the commit message associated with it. GitLens also allows you to see the blame annotations, so you can quickly identify the author of a specific code line and understand the context of each change that has been made. With GitLens, you can easily time travel through your project's history, viewing previous commits and changes to gain insights into the evolution of your code base, and it also streamlines your code review processes by providing visual representations of code changes, helping teams collaborate more efficiently and understanding the impact of each contribution to the code. So now that we know what Git is and GitLens is, let's take a look at how we actually get started with GitLens through installation and setup. To install GitLens, we first must have Visual Studio Code installed on our machine. If you don't already have that installed, please head over to code.visualstudio.com for more information on how to do that. If you already have Visual Studio Code installed, let's get started. In Visual Studio Code, go to the extensions view by clicking on the square icon on the left sidebar. Or you could use the Control shift x shortcut on Windows or Command shift x on Mac. In the extensions view, type Git Lens into the search bar. Git Lens should appear as the first result. Click the Install button to install the extension. You may see a Reload button. If you do, click on the Reload button and this will reload Visual Studio Code and enable the extension. But don't worry if you don't see it. Now that you have Git Lens installed, let's take a look at the settings you have the ability to configure. To configure Git Lens settings, click on the Git Lens icon on the left hand sidebar. Depending on the size of your screen and how many extensions you have installed, you may have to click on the ellipses to see it. A new sidebar will open if you scroll down. You will see Git Lens settings. Click on that. Here you can customise various Git Lens settings, such as configure how recent changes are displayed in your code, adjust the appearance and behaviour of Git Lens code lens annotations, or customise how Git Lens displays blame annotations for the current line. There is a lot of descriptions on how to configure the settings and what they do, with examples as well. So take some time to have a read, but you may want to come back to changing some of these settings once you have got used to Git Lens. Now down the right hand side, you may have noticed that there is a bunch of links available. These will help you find certain settings and be able to configure them quicker when you do wish to configure them. But that's it. You've successfully installed GitLens in Visual Studio Code and you've had a look at the settings that you're able to configure. Now that we have GitLens installed, let's take a look at how GitLens deals with blame annotations. But first of all, what do we actually mean by blame? 
So in the context of Git and version control, blame refers to a command and a feature that allows you to determine who last modified each line of code in a particular file and when that modification occurred. This feature helps developers and engineers understand the history and ownership of specific code lines within a file. So let's take a look at that in action within Git Lens. So as I said, blame annotations help you understand who last modified a specific line of code and use. If we open a file in our project that's under version control with Git, we can locate a line that we're interested in understanding. If we place our cursor on that line, as we can see, Git Lens has displayed a small pop-up annotation next to the line we've selected. The annotation reveals several pieces of information. The author of the last commit that modified this line, the commit message associated with that commit, the date and time of the last modification, and we can click around this annotation to get more information around the commit. We could get the commit hash, we could get additional commit messages, and we can even actually look at that commit or that pull request within GitHub as well. There's lots of things you can click on in this annotation. To close the annotation pop-up, simply click anywhere else outside of it or press the escape key. You can also enable and see the blame details by clicking on the small Git Lens icon in the top right hand corner. You now have all the blame annotations on the left hand side of your screen and your code on the right. You can click on a specific line and see what other changes were made as part of that commit. And you also get that small pop-up annotation as well, so you still have access to that information. Git Lens's Blame annotations are an invaluable tool for tracking changes and understanding the history of your code base. They can help you collaborate effectively with your team and maintain code quality. Git Lens offers an exciting feature called Time Travel that allows you to explore your project's history like a time machine. So let's take a look at that. So if we open a file in our project that's under version control with Git, we can click on the commit graph icon in the bottom of the editor. A panel now opens with a lot of information about the history of our code. At the top, there's a timeline that shows us the commit history of the project we're viewing. As we move along this timeline, dots appear. Those are commits. And if we hover over them, we see how many commits have been made on that date, if any at all. To see more information about these commits, we click on that dot. The commit graph will now reload to that time and you can start to look at those commits that happened on that date and interact with them. The Git Time Travel feature is an invaluable tool for understanding how your project has evolved over time, pinpointing when issues were introduced and even retrieving lost code snippets. Code reviews are something engineers and developers do often. They help to ensure the quality, reliability and maintainability of software code before it is merged into a code base or deployed to production. Code reviews have several key objectives, including error detection, reducing technical debt, team collaboration and enhancing security. So how can and does Git Lens help when you're going through a code review? Let's take a look. Let's open a file we want to review and let's leverage Git Lens to make that process easier. We can use Git Lens to show who made each change and when. As we saw earlier, we can hover over the place inside the code we want to see more information about and a pop-up display appears. This gives us features to be able to look at the commits, look at the history of it and interrogate that a bit more. We also have the ability to turn on a heat map to see where the most changes have been made within the code. We can also turn on the file changes view, which will highlight the latest changes and give us an instant view of where to check. We do this by using the Git Lens button in the right hand corner. There are also times when we might want to compare two different commits. To do this, in the Git Lens bar, you can find an option called search and compare. Using this feature, you can search for a commit by different filters, commit message, author, SHA, file, or changes. So let's search for a file. We click on the start search button and a taskbar appears. We will select search by file and type in readme.md in this case. We now have the results. 
So we can use the feature called Compare References to look back through the commit history. We click on the button and then select the branch or point in time we want to compare the commits with. Now we can click on one of the search results and we can see what the file used to look like and what it currently looks like, giving us a view of understanding the changes and understanding the history of that file and code base. GitLens adds a dedicated sidebar to Visual Studio Code. If we click on the GitLens icon in the sidebar, we can access a wealth of information. One of the features I like is branches and it can help you switch between branches, fetch information from the branches, and check if the branch is up to date with the main branch. This can be really helpful when doing code reviews and trying to find that branch to be able to review in the first place. In conclusion, GitLens is a game changer for code reviews. It empowers you to navigate code history, understand changes, and leave feedback. By leveraging GitLens in your code review process, you can become a much more efficient and effective code reviewer. Now that we've taken a look at what GitLens is, let's take a look and think about some best practices and tips we can use for our code and for using GitLens. Make it a habit to use GitLens code annotations to understand who made changes and when. This practice promotes accountability and helps you quickly identify the context of specific code lines. When conducting code reviews, use blame annotations to trace the authorship of each code change and review the associated commit messages. This feature streamlines the review process and enhances your ability to provide meaningful feedback to your colleagues. GitLens also allows you to easily navigate through your project's history. Take advantage of this feature to gain insights into the evolution of your code base. You, you can identify trends, understand major milestones and spot patterns in your development process. GitLens provides various customization options to tailor its behavior to your preference. Make sure you explore the settings to adjust the level of detail displayed in annotations, configure how GitLens integrates with your editor, and set up keyboard shortcuts. GitLens is most effective when integrated into your daily development workflow. Use it not only for reviewing code, but also for tracking your own contributions, troubleshooting issues, and exploring the history of specific files or directory. The more you integrate GitLens into your routine, the more value you'll derive from this powerful tool. Hopefully by following these best practices and tips, you can harness the full potential of GitLens to enhance your version control and code review processes, leading to much more efficient and collaborative software development. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.